Republicans in Congress who think they can oppose funding for Ukraine and not be held accountable, history is watching. History is watching. History is watching. Failure to support Ukraine at this critical moment will never be forgotten. History is watching. Aren't you so tired of being told that? What does that even mean? Joining me now, Senator Ron Johnson from the state of Wisconsin. It's amazing to me. You know what, Senator, before we get on to all this foreign aid crap, it's amazing to me that we have a good senator from a purple state in Wisconsin and our red state senators in general suck. Can you explain how that happened in this country? Really can't. <laughs> wish it weren't so. Yeah, no, I wish it weren't so as well. Okay, so... $95 billion in foreign aid, Ukraine, uh, Israel, Taiwan. Uh, you and I have had this conversation before, but it's, it's wild how people act like we still have money. That there's any, even if you're the most passionate Ukraine or Israel person in the world, all oh, that's fine. There's no money left. We're just borrowing all this stuff. I'm actually glad you started there because that'd be the first complaint is this is money yes. we don't have. Uh, you know, we just happened to spend $880 some billion a year in defense. And every time there's an emergency, you know, we got we got to mortgage our children's future further. Well, you know, what are we getting for the eight hundred eighty four billion dollars? It's a serious question to ask. And one of the things I found out during this debate, uh, for example, Russia can produce four point five million one hundred fifty five millimeter shells. That's the main artillery shell that they're firing each other. Russians can fire ten thousand a day. The West, we can't. I don't think even produce a million uh, a year. Uh, so Ukraine's firing a couple thousand a day. But, but here's the point on, on funding. Russia produces those shells at $600 a shell. Our military industrial complex charges us five to $6,000 a shell, 10 times the price. Uh, we're, we're not getting the bang for the buck, uh, not even close. But again, the, the more basic uh, issue here is, should we really be spending and sending $60 billion as fuel for the flames of a bloody stalemate. Uh, where's the strategy to end this thing? Every day that goes by, more Ukrainians die, more Russian conscripts die, take no joy in that, and more Ukraine gets destroyed. So if you're concerned about the Ukrainian people, you ought to be asking, well, what are we doing to their country or what is being done to their country? Listen, Vladimir Putin's an evil war criminal, but it certainly sounds uh, like in Istanbul, he was willing to end this war pretty early on. And it sounds like he might be open to it again. Why aren't we even talking? Okay, Senator, I'm glad you brought up why aren't we even talking because our administration, and frankly, Republicans do this as well, leadership, Mitch McConnell types, they love to brag about all the munitions we've sent and all the Russian troops American munitions have killed. But we used to fight proxy wars in a more quiet way because we didn't want it to become more than a proxy war. When did we shift and now we just go to step up to the podium all the time and we brag about, oh yeah, we killed a bunch more Ruskies. Yeah, we're murdering the Russians. They're going to respond at some point in time. It's a nation state. They have to. I guess that's where we got really stupid as, uh, you know, as leaders. Uh, listen, I, again, I say I take no joy in the death of Russian conscripts. I mean, these are probably young men yanked out of their villages to be used as cannon fodder in Putin's war. Um, so one, one of the more depraved justifications, by the way, for this funding is, well, the $60 billion really isn't going to Ukraine. That's being spent here in America to build up our military industrial base like it needs to be built up further. And uh, that's going to create jobs in your state. Uh, that's a depraved justification for uh, supporting Ukraine. Gosh, it is terrible. All right, you uh, did an X Spaces and talked about Mitch McConnell and secret negotiations. Could you elaborate on what what's the newest nefarious thing that Mitch McConnell tried to pull? Well, remember when President Biden asked for this military supplemental, you know, something like $110 billion. Uh, back then it was for Ukraine, Taiwan, Israel, and then $14 billion for the border, but, but not to secure the border to hire more agents to more efficiently encounter, process, and disperse illegal migrants all through America. It's been about at least six million so far uh, to date. So Mitch McConnell, his top priority was always funding for Ukraine. Once we started hearing from our constituents that, you know, what you probably ought to do is secure our own border. 
That is a clear and present danger to this country. We ought to secure that before we spend billions to secure somebody else's border. Uh, first of all, it's true. It was a very effective political point, and even Mitch McConnell had to bow to that. So all of a sudden, he makes a about face turn and says in conference, you know, colleagues, we, we need to def defeat this cloture vote on the supplemental to show the Democrats we're serious about securing the border. Now, I, I kind of rolled my eyes when I heard him say that because uh, I figured some, in some way, shape, or form, the fix was in here, and that's what ended up happening. So instead of debating this in public, you know, on an issue that the vast majority of Americans agree with Republicans on, to secure the border, to force President Biden to use the executive authority he has. And we don't need to pass more laws. Some would be helpful, but we really don't need to because Trump used existing laws to secure the border. Biden used his existing authority to open it up. So he could use the same thing to close it, but he wants an open border. He causes problems. So we needed some forcing mechanism and that's all we ever asked Mitch McConnell to do. Okay, you're, you're, I guess you're in charge of negotiations. You're the leader. All we want is to tie Ukraine funding to actually securing the border. We talked about this repeatedly in conference. You know, I actually have metrics, uh, thresholds that the, the president has to meet before it, fun, money flows or continues to flow to Ukraine. Unbeknownst to us in the secret negotiations that Leader McConnell set up, uh, he apparently told James Langford, that's not even on the table. We're, we're, not, we're not even talking about you know, some forcing mechanism. Uh, we're just going to do this massive immigration bill that was so awful, so bad. You know, listen, guys like me, you know, I didn't kill that bill. It killed itself. Once it saw the light of day, people saw the language. This is worse than it was being leaked. And so even Mitch McConnell, on the bill that his staff was in the room, this is what Senator Murphy told us, his staff's in the room, McConnell wrote the bill, is what Senator Chris Murphy, the Democrat, told us. McConnell wrote the bill. The very bill that McConnell wrote, he ended up in the end voting against and encouraging every Republican to vote against. I mean, go figure. It was a disaster. And so we've taken a issue that the American people agree with us on, and now we've given the Democrats exactly what they wanted. The Democrats didn't want to secure the border. They want an open border. They caused this problem. All they were looking for was political cover. And Mitch McConnell, you know, Mr. Long-Term Strategist, you know, the, the genius uh, politician, gave Democrats cover on the border. You, you can't make this up. Let's talk about that genius in giving them cover on the border. I have a really cockamamie theory, and it's just a theory, but... Boy, he ran cover for Democrats on an issue that was going to hurt Democrats badly this coming November. It's almost as if he wants Republicans to have a bad November. He had to know there was no way a crap bill like this, an amnesty bill, was going to actually pass. So why bother with all these secret negotiations or cobbling it together unless you want Republicans to lose? I don't know. I think Mitch McConnell's primary goal has always been to be majority leader. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't think that'd be his motivation. I, I, again, I just, as I said, I, I don't think he ne could negotiate his way out of a paper bag. What he's very good at, what he's very good at is assembling or getting just enough Republicans to join Democrats to pass Democrat priorities. That's, that's what I've witnessed in the 13 years I've been here. He's great at just getting, you know, nine or 10 of us. And in this case, he got 22, which I, is, I find pretty depressing. But uh, again, a minority of the Republican conference to join Democrats to pass their priorities. Uh, I, I don't consider that effective center-right, certainly not effective conservative leadership.